It is a wonderful world, but the world is what we make it. You know, that song was released in 1967. It's about appreciating the beauty in the world and recognizing the kindness that exists even amidst chaos and problems and anger. There is goodness there. It was meant to heal the racial tension at the time. And actually that song, A Wonderful World, What a Wonderful World, was more accepted in England than it was the United States because people thought we were, oh, do you see the problems we're having? How can you say it's a wonderful world? The gift we have and understand is really we get to see there's a wonderful world no matter what's going on around us. Barbara and I were talking about the wonkiness of the world and that even though the wonkiness is present, the goodness is always there. We know, we teach in our classes and here on Sundays, there's only one power. There's not two powers. There's not a power of good and a power of evil. There's one power, and the way we use it is how it's defined. Do you get that? Do we get that? The way we use this one. Now, this one power that we're talking about, we may call it God, spirit, whatever you want, but it is infinite energy and unlimited creative potential. Isn't that cool? And it's there all the time. There's never a time it's not there. But how we choose to use that power, we decide if it's a wonderful world or not. The world is what we make it. Through our thinking and our feeling and our actions, we decide what this world is. And I know because you're all here that we choose to see this as a wonderful world. But in this wonderful world in which we live, we are called to change and to grow and to evolve. And I titled this Make the Change, but what we want is to make the change for the better. There's something that I, I really realized. We went to a, down to UCSD uh, yesterday afternoon. The traffic getting down there was just wonderful. <laughs> but it was uh, the dance, uh, the dance, the theater and dance department there. And uh, Deanna had taken an African dance class from one of the teachers, an amazing woman there, Cara Mack, who's done a lot of choreography for The Color Purple. She was in The Color Purple. She's choreographed for the Grammys and dance, and she's a wonderful. And they did three different, um, just interpretations, three different choreographers. Is that our grandchild by any chance? <laughs> what a wonderful world it is. We hear babies cry for sure. It's perfect. But she started off, um, you know, and there was a, just a, it was a small theater, but it was filled with people. We were the only ones that had a child there, a child under two, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> she started out, and we didn't know what it was going to be about, but it was one of Martin Luther King's speeches. His speeches recorded, his voice. Now, I've used part of that speech many times, but I'd never heard it in its entirety. And they had one beautiful black man doing, he was mouthing the, the reading of Martin Luther King in the mood and spirit while people were dancing around him. We thought we were going to be clapping and <laughs> we were it was so emotional and so beautiful. But two things came up. They first came out with a flag that says, what's next in the dance? And the change happens now. The change starts now, which means we can change right here in this moment. But the piece of that speech that I hadn't heard before, I may have read it, but I hadn't heard it, when Martin Luther King was saying when he was in Atlanta and he had so dang much work to do, you know, he had so much to do and his office was full and he had lists of things to do and they called him to come to the sanitation uh, conference in Memphis to help the sanitation workers get better wages. And he goes, how am I supposed to do that? I have so much to do. Do any of you ever feel like that? <laughs> well, I mean, it's just, he said, I can't possibly do it. What would it mean if I didn't go? Well, I'd get my work done. But his next question was, 
What would it mean to them if I didn't go? You know, instead of thinking, what would it mean for me? What would it mean for them? And what came to mind is here we're talking about make the change for the better. When we can make the change within ourselves to do just what Griselda was talking about, shift our paradigm from it's all about me to a greater understanding, how our energy, our life, our understanding affects the entire energy of the world. Energy of the world. We need to change ourselves inside to have new and better thoughts. And it was very cute when you were speaking, Court. That was so nice because we need to neutralize our negative thoughts. And one of the main neutralizing agents, guess what it is, Court? Forgiveness. Forgiveness, for sure. We need to start realizing, really, we, on a daily basis, well, I'm going to read this. It says um, that life is a mirror. Now, um, Ernest Holmes says, life is a mirror, and it will reflect right back to us what we think into it. But it's not like if I think one thing, one naughty little thing, that that's going to come back to us. It's the general tendency of our thinking. But it's the law of reciprocity, the law of cause and effects, the law of circulation. We are putting out energy that comes back to us. So we have to be really, 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 really careful of the direction of our thinking. If we look in the mirror in the morning and say, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, what's going to come back to us the rest of the day? You know, we're going to be thinking about the, oh, oh, oh. It's going to come right there, right there. But if we look in that mirror and go, wow, you're filled with potential. I really like your attitude. It's going to be a good day. Then we can find the wonderful world, no matter what wonkiness and craziness and chaos and other stuff we find. We'll be able to find something better. But we really have to direct our thinking in better ways. And Ernest Holmes says, we always hold the steering wheel of our thoughts. We can decide. Now, you can tell that first look in the mirror was going down here, and the second look in the mirror was going up here. We direct that energy, and we can decide what we're going to make of this moment and every moment. We need to be willing to do the work. I mean, nature shows us that we are here to grow and evolve and become better and brighter and all that. But when it comes to our personal self, well, I'm a little scared. What's going to happen? I don't know. You know, what if I change? Will I be up for it? Well, of course, you've got infinite potential and unlimited creativity all around you. We have to work at it, but we can become it. We have to do that. The choice is ours. As um, Griselda, you were saying, uh, our changes occur in our experience when we change the direction of our thoughts. We can make things better now. If you stop criticizing and start praising, can you imagine what would happen? The head, I don't know about your head, but mine sometimes goes around in circles. You know, you get a little something in it, and it just goes around like this. Does anybody else know how that happens? You know? And this is where I use my lifeline and call a friend. <laughs> and I called a dear friend when my head was going around like that. Because sometimes people that you trust and care about know better than you do. So I was talking and sharing my little dilemma and uh, being listened to very well and some questions asked. And then a question was asked to me. I want you right now to list your top two priorities. Right now, not, not all over the place everywhere, but right now in this moment, your top two priorities. And so I listed them and I went, oh, they have nothing to do with what I'm worrying about. <laughs> How cool is that? And I got to change my mind like that. Now, if one of those priorities was right in alignment with what I was thinking, we'd have to go somewhere else. But there's things we can do, because really to change our life and the energy around us for the better, our head and our heart need to be in alignment. So our head needs direction. It needs that focus and di discipline and deliberate choice that you're headed in the right directions of thinking. Now, your heart. Your heart is the energy. It needs inspiration and motivation. We need to find the bright spots in life that light us up 
and turn us on. We, those things, it's our heart that can neutralize our head. And what are the neutralizing agents? Court, forgiveness, understanding, love, all of that. We can make things better and brighter. So when we look in that mirror, we can truly mean you are filled with potential. You have possibilities. I love, I love my life. And you can say that when we get those things in alignment and know we are doing what's good and right and true. You know, often, I know I do, the world is big and it's overwhelming and the troubles seem crazy. But I remember, it's something I read a long time ago by Jane, Jane, Jane Goodall. And Jane Goodall, the primatologist, um, Gorillas in the Mist, I oh, love that. She's so good with animals, she just she got it. She's such a beautiful, beautiful being. She said a woman came to her and said, you know, Jane, I, it's so important for me to do something to change the world. It's so important, but there's too many things. Everything's such a mess, I couldn't even begin to think of what to do. And Jane said, just take your piece of it. Just your little piece. Because it, remember, in the mind of God, there is no size. Our little bit of goodness, the little difference we can make, can not only change the way we see our own life, but can have a much bigger effect on the world at large. We're here, and we're just in green, because it's St. Patty's Day. And I know from teaching kindergarten that we made shamrocks and they're good luck and it's a happy day and we can do good things. But you know St. Patrick wasn't Irish and he wore blue. <laughs> Go figure. You know, but what happened, he was English and he was, mm, I think, 16 years old and he went to his parents' summer house and he was on the beach and he got abducted by Irish pirates and they took him back to Ireland, and he was a slave. So he came from a very Christian family, but he didn't really believe any of it until he got in a place of difficulty. And that's when his spirituality and uh, Jesus became a very big part of his life, and that helped him through this time of being a slave. And sometime in his mid-20s, he escaped and went back to England. But he didn't stay there. He went back to Ireland to share the goodness that had helped him through his time of being a slave, through the hardship. He helped the slaves. He helped the people lighten up, lighten up their lives. So the little shamrock, the three-leaf clover, hope, faith, and love, he brought those. He shared them and made life. He made life brighter, but it took the hardship for him to make that difference. Wow. So if, we, um, if uh, we find our part, Ernest Holmes says, in the physical world, there are always things changing. In the spiritual world, God never changes. Behind the endless process of change, there is that which never changes. And that's what we depend on. And that's what we know is true. There's always something greater, a goodness that's waiting for us to open up and be, be available. So will you stand up? Hey, it's St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> get, a little, get a little life under your feet, you know. <laughs> um, so pretend you have a mirror in front of your face right now. Just pretend. You can just pretend it's there. Hold it like that. And I just want you I love the person I see in that mirror. Just say it. That person is filled with light. That person is filled with love. That person is filled with goodness. I see positivity all around them. I see all around them. Hey, that person is me. I love my life. And so it is. God bless you all.